I want to talk to you guys about the extra bass feature in your Yamaha Avantage AV receiver because in all likelihood, you're probably setting it wrong. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. But first, I want to give you a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by the AV Summit, an online convention for the AV enthusiasts. Happening October 25th to 29th, big changes are coming. Go to theavsummit.com for more info. Brought to you by the show's platinum sponsor, Hisense, with their 100-day no regrets guarantee. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisello with Audioholics, and as you can see back here, I've got a Yamaha RXA 6A Avantage AV receiver. It's their brand new lineup for 2021. I'm in the trenches here measuring this thing, checking out all of its performance metrics that I'm going to be sharing with you really shortly. But before I do that, I wanted to give you some little teasers on some of the things I've found to help you guys get your AV receiver set up right. So you don't have to wait for my review to get the entire impression of it. If you have this receiver right now, I'm going to show you a feature on here that's going to get you the best possible base. So Yamaha for years have had a feature called the extra base feature. And I did a video about a few weeks ago talking about the LFE plus main feature that the Denon and Sound United receivers have, Marantz, for example, and also the extra base feature that Yamaha has. Most AV receivers have this feature, but they all, they all operate slightly differently. So I was pretty surprised when I did some measurements on the extra base feature, what I found in a scenario that is very possible that you could set, which I don't recommend. What I'm telling you in this video is based on measured science here. That's why I could tell you until I'm blue in the face about how to set up a product, but until you see the measurements, you may not believe my word, but you could at least believe my audio precision because that thing is really accurate in doing measurements. So I wanna share my screen and just show you some images that I captured from the setup and then we could go over what this all means. So when you go into the setup menu of your Yamaha Avantage receiver by hitting the little wheel icon, you can go into your speaker configuration and you could go and set your channels to large or small. That's what you're seeing here in this screenshot. The next image here is if you set your speakers to small, it'll say small. If you set it to large, it'll say large and even changes the size of the speaker on the GUI. Very cool interface that they have here. I really like it. It shows you in um, blue, whatever speaker set small, and it shows you in pink, whatever speaker set large. And then last but not least, if you hit the little button, and I wanna show you this because it's kind of hidden and, mo and many people may not realize, this little button here, it's got like the little lines on it right there. That's the button you hit that gives you all of these different audio options. And that's where you'll find the extra bass feature. And that's what I'm showing you here. You either have extra bass on or extra bass off. So before we get into how to set that, I want to first show you that the Yamaha's bass management is excellent. I'm not surprised by this because for years they've been doing really good bass management for my measurements and from actually integrating a receiver in my own speaker system. So here I set it for the main speakers to small and I set the subwoofer on. Um, I have it at an 80 Hertz crossover. And as you can see with the cursor marks here, we've got a perfectly flat response above the high pass on the uh, speakers with a 12 dB per octave high pass slope below that 80 Hertz crossover. And then we have a 24 dB per octave low pass slope on the subwoofer and they all integrate properly at the 80 Hertz crossover setting. This is what you would get when you get a THX uh, certified product. If in order to pass THX, it has to have the 12 dB per octave high pass, 24 dB per octave low pass. Yamaha is not certified THX, but based just on this measurement, they could get it for their base management because it's done right. And I wanted to show you guys that. And also note the fact that this receiver is flat out to about 48 kilohertz. That's pretty awesome because most processors, especially when they're doing base management or room correction, their sampling rates is limited to 48K. So you will see them uh, brick wall at around 22 kilohertz. This has double that bandwidth. Not that you can hear it, but it is nice. It keeps everything phase linear up until whatever frequencies you can hear. If you're really young, you're lucky if you can hear 20 kilohertz. And if you're old like me, not so much. So I wanted to show you um, 
The only time I would recommend using the extra bass feature is when you have your main speaker set large. The whole purpose of this feature is for people that want to have their main speaker set large, the front, left, and right, but they also want to have subwoofer output for two-channel music. Because if you don't set this setting and you set your main speakers large, your subwoofer won't work for two-channel music. So this extra bass feature, which is similar to what I said before, the LFE plus main feature on the Den and the Marantz receivers, will allow you to have a full range main channels, as you can see in the blue line from 5 hertz all the way to 50 kilohertz. It's a flat line for the main channels. But it'll also engage the subwoofer as well, as you can see in the green line with the 80 hertz crossover that I set for the mains, even though I set the mains large. This is great. This is great for people that want to have their subwoofers engaged with their main speakers producing bass. Because if you've got subwoofers in your system and you've got large towers and you want to have the speaker set large, you really should take advantage of the modal distribution that you get from playing multiple bass sources as long as you get them to integrate correctly. Now, what might happen in this case if you run this feature is you're going to get some overlap frequencies uh, between the subwoofer and the mains that are going to give you a boost at certain frequencies where they're synergistically combining and maybe exciting a room mode. And in that case, you're going to want to use the PEQ to flatten the response out a little bit. I'll do a separate video on showing you how to use the PEQ feature on this receiver, and it's great. It's one of the best features on a Yamaha receiver these days. I'm really happy to see that they still have it. I hope that other companies like Sound United will put a PEQ instead of using that useless GEQ that they have for manual calibration, but that's a topic for another video. So I want to show you what happens when you set the extra bass to on when your main speakers are set small. Danger, danger, Will Robertson. This is not good. I don't understand why Yamaha would ship a product where you can make this happen in this scenario where you misconfigure your base management. I wish they would take this out. My suggestion to Yamaha would be, do not allow the option to turn extra bass on if your main speakers are set small, because this is just a nightmare. Look what it's doing to the response. The green trace for the subwoofer response has a big dip at around 25 Hertz and then a huge bump at 50. And then look at the mains that were set small. They're not flat. Um, above the high pass, they have a big bump at around 50 to 100 hertz. It's like they're combining bass twice. I don't know what's going on. It's not pretty. This is not a room measurement, by the way. This is measured out of the preamp output, so no room effects are shown here. Just, just shows you how bad the response is if you set the main speakers to small and accidentally engage the extra bass feature to on. And I don't know what's going on at those high frequencies, but there's some ringing going on in that filter. Bottom line is do not... Do not use this setting. Do not use the extra bass setting if your main speakers are set small. So anyways, yeah, I'm a bit puzzled when I measured that. I kind of knew something might have happened screwy with that because I did in, in the older uh, Avantage products like the uh, CXA 5100, I believe, I remember I set the extra bass on with the main speaker set small, and I thought it sounded a little boomy, but I never measured it. So I finally measured it here and showed you empirically that you do not want to use the extra bass set to on if your main speakers are set small. And the reality of the situation is I hope Yamaha makes some changes because they allow you to set the main speakers to small and other speakers to large. My theory is if your main speakers are not set to large, then no other speaker in the group should be allowed to be set to large. That's just how I think things should operate. Of course, some people have different configuration options and that's all on you. But the bottom line is right now, extra bass should only be used if your main speakers are set to large and you want subwoofer output in two channel sources. So guys, I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to ask questions or suggest video topics. And of course, it keeps us going and we greatly appreciate that. And let me know down below, are you running an Avantage receiver? Did you incorrectly have the extra bass feature on when you shouldn't? Give me some experiences down below. Let me know if you found this useful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and like. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.